Last Friday, there was this uh, very, very interesting story in the news. Maybe you caught it. Uh, John DeLong. Excuse me. Had a bite of peanut butter there during the break. Not a good idea. On On Friday, John DeLong. The top NSA official in charge of making sure that the NSA complies, that their analysts, the people who work for them, comply with the rules and regulations uh, protecting the privacy of Americans. He responded to reports that the NSA had uh, frequently, several thousand times, violated their own privacy rules. And he was talking to a group of reporters on a conference call and, and uh, about the Washington Post's re- report that that a uh, leaked internal NSA audit showed that there had been 2,776 incidents of violations in a one-year period. That's, that's interesting. 2,776. Had it been 1,000 fewer, it would have been 1,776. Hmm. Anyway... He told reporters that the majority of the violations were unintentional human or technical errors and that the number of intentional errors by NSA analysts was, quote, minuscule, involving over uh, only a couple over the past decade. So, you know, while his classifying thousands of NSA private violations as minuscule is kind of disturbing, it raises a really interesting question. What crimes are considered minuscule in America? I mean, for instance, shoplifting a piece of jewelry from a department store. That's a pretty minuscule crime. But usually you still get arrested and prosecuted and give it a punishment ranging from a fine and community service to jail time. What about assault? If a husband slaps his wife around, that's fairly minuscule compared to stabbing or shooting her, right? Or vice versa, a wife or husband. Even so, the spouse is usually arrested and charged with assault and battery and punished for the crime. Then there's those really annoying things, you know, parking and driving violations that we all hate to get. I mean, parking in a space with an expired meter, that's minuscule. But tell that to the cop. Try tearing up the minuscule ticket in front of him. No, don't. You know, driving a few miles an hour over the posted speed limit. Hey, officer, it's minuscule. I was going 70 and a 65. That's minus five miles an hour. Speed cameras are still going to get you. If the cops don't pull you over, you'll get a ticket in the mail within a matter of weeks. Or what if somebody steals your credit card with a twenty or $30,000 line of credit, but only charges $100 before they get caught? That's minuscule, right? But that person is going to get arrested. They're going to get charged with credit card fraud or identity theft, and they're going to hand down, you know, they're going to get a heavy fine, jail time. The point of all this is that in the American criminal justice system, even if a crime is considered to be minuscule, the perpetrator is still arrested and punished. But under DeLong's logic, since the NSA doesn't appear to have punished anybody, he would apparently have us do away with all these minuscule crimes and let people who commit them go unpunished. You know, we'd pretty quickly turn into a shoplifter and parking violators paradise. Our justice system has failed miserably at sending banksters to jail, which is not minuscule. But when it's at its best, I mean, setting that aside, which is damn hard to do, but setting that aside, when our criminal justice system is at its best, All Americans are held accountable for crimes that they commit, no matter how petty or minuscule those crimes may seem, and no matter how powerful or influential influential their perpetrators may be. And that should include our government. We must hold our government. The people who have the power to throw us in jail, we have to hold them to the same standard 
as we all hold the rest of us to. I mean, if there have been 2,776 incidents of NSA analysts violating the privacy rights of American Americans just over the past year, then anybody, every, everybody from the analysts themselves to the head of the agency should be held accountable for their actions because nobody should be above the law in the United States. Now, we do have a big problem with above the law stuff. And as I said, you know, the principal ones are the banksters, but, you know, we've got drug companies that are killing people. Uh, Mike Papantonio has been keeping us up to date on that. There's a, a, a big one coming down the road right now. We've got BP. This is incredible. BP is starting to backpedal and say, I, we really don't want to pay for the damage we did. And we, you know, we, we don't want to go to jail for killing 11 people. And it really wasn't our fault anyway, or maybe it was, but who, who cares? It's minuscule. It's just a minuscule amount of oil. It's only going to kill a couple hundred thousand or maybe a few million life forms. Yeah, it's minuscule. 11 people dying? Eh, that's minuscule. Consider how many people die every day in America from all kinds of things. 11 of them dying on an oil rig? Eh, it's minuscule. At what point do we say no, it's not? On the other hand, there probably are, not probably, there are some things that we consider crimes right now that I think we're thinking rather stupidly about that are minuscule, like smoking pot. This is, this is why, you know, the, the, the whole libertarian thing, this is what concerns me about it, because they're, you know, I, I refer to libertarians as Republicans who want to smoke dope and get laid, because all of their economics and their fundamental politics, with the possible exception of foreign policy, are basically Republican policies. But they want to decriminalize prostitution and marijuana. And so, you know, a lot of young people go, hey, what's the political party that wants to decriminalize pot? The libertarians? Cool, sign me up. They want to decriminalize prostitution? Well, that's all right, too. And, and... What's happened is that the Republican Party, knowing that as the party of the billionaires and the big corporations, there's no possible way that they can win elections in this country unless they can build a coalition of a whole bunch of different, very, very kind of sliced out single voter groups. So they shout out to the racists, they shout out to the, to the homophobes, they shout out to the to the neocons, they shout out to, to the, 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 the people, the, the Islamophobes, uh, they shout out to the fundamentalist Christians. You know, the Republican Party has all these outreach efforts to all these individual little slices, these niche voters. And frankly, they're doing a damn good job of getting the people who common, just very commonsensically, if there's such a word, think that it's stupid that we put people in jail for smoking pot. And that concerns me that there are, you know, the, that there are so many people in America, some about a third, I think, of Americans have at one point or another in their lives tried pot, and that these people know, I, they, they know, there's no reason that this should be a, a, a kind of crime that you go to prison for. And the Republican Party is picking those folks up because they have embraced the libertarians. Ron Paul was libertarian, Rand Paul's libertarian, on and on it goes. The Democrats need to get their act together on this. You know? They need to say, okay, if you want a minuscule crime, here is one, and we're going to legalize it.